So I posted a picture of one of the tools uh, coming out in 1.6.8 and it allows you to plant a whole lot of objects. I wouldn't necessarily advise you doing this, but um, it was the first time I got it working. I thought I'd show it off to people. Uh, as usual, you get um, the th usual thumbs up and then you get other people that want to hijack the thread for their own agenda. In this case, it's Grant, he wants to, um, uh, looks nice, but even nicer would be have some useful stuff that actually helps make a decent product that runs well in the application it's designed for. I posted a pertinent suggestion a few weeks back and the tumbleweed rolled by. Yeah. Um, that suggestion is here. Um, and I will highlight that he's trying to do a project which is 930 kilometers long. Um, so good luck with that size track. Um, any game that is going to have really long uh, tracks in it will need landscape that uh, tiles. So you have many tiles of landscape and, and you design each tile individually um, around its own um, center. Um, with AC it doesn't do that. The further you get away from the uh, origin, the less accurate the physics are going to be. So I think you'll hit physics limits and probably memory limits as well trying to do these sort of length tracks. That said, let's, um, a lot of this stuff is probably pertinent um, to smaller tracks as well. So firstly, would it be possible to set exports with a set vert limit? Um, it, well, it already limits how many verts go out in the models. Um, and if Grant had been using the latest version, he probably wouldn't be having this issue. Um, so he's using very detailed terrain and then wanting to split that up. So RTB does that now. If he had been using the, the recent beta, which is now out, um, I doubt he'd be re making this request. It's certainly you wouldn't put it in the hands of the user. A lot of the people that come to RTB are new to track building um, and even though RTB is uh, good for experts and beginners alike, um, you don't want people setting their own vert limits. This max vert limit of 22k, um, the testing I've done actually comes out at 35k. Um, I know you're seeing another thread somewhere, it's 24k, but the, all the testing I've done is 35k is around about the limit. If, if you've got some examples of where it's still not working RTB, let me know. This part, exporting a scene with 100k trees, I, I showed in the previous video how we're using the k-means clustering to group things. To, prior to that, um, it was done in grids in RTB. Um, either way, it, it always worked, even with 100k trees. And you can look at the end of this video. I've got an example of a track that has a, a lot of trees and grass and other stuff. Uh, Grant says here that he only wish I had started with Blender instead of wasting so much time with RTB. Um, Blender's a great tool. I recommend everybody get into it. The latest version is, is uh, much improved over previous ones. Um, so definitely get into it. Can it do what RTB does? No. Um, RTB does a lot of things that are, are far simpler to use and far faster. So the track that you'll see at the end of this video was done in about four hours with RTB. In Blender I have no idea. It would take much longer to, to try and model all of the stuff that we do in RTB so easily. Alastair chips in. <laughs> um, you have an argument for everything Brendan. Um, no I don't. And you were never wrong. Um, yes, I am. Um, yeah, th this part gets me. It took, your, it took a global pandemic to sit your ass down and work on RTB. Uh, no, I've been doing it for five years. Um, you may not notice when I'm working on it, but um, I spend so much time on this product. I do it part time. Um, I do it uh, most nights and weekends. And just because you don't see progress or you don't see a feature that you want in particular um, doesn't mean I'm not actually working on it. Um, this bit first, there, there are actually duplicate, um, many duplicate verts. Let's um, have a look at an example and see the impact. Of it. So we've exported a scene here, Pike's Peak, and uh, where the large triangles meet each other, any points that are shared along there will actually be duplicated. Um, is it that big a deal? Well, it does make a little bit of a difference to the verts when we merge these. 
uh, but the faces actually remain exactly the same and it's the faces that are more important. Verts take up a fairly small amount of space um, when drawing your polygons that's where it takes the time so pushing out a, a, a few thousand verts is not that bad. Uh, merge by distance here and we go from 25,000 verts down to 21,600. Uh, faces remains exactly the same, tries remain exactly the same. So it's really not going to make that much difference to your graphics performance. Definitely something I should clean up, um, but really this isn't an example of great inefficiency. So with regards to this comment, um, there would only be really rare cases where you've come close with your track to cutting one of the large polys but haven't actually cut it and it won't be tagged. So that's going to be addressed in a different way in a future update. Uh, for this point, if Grant had have used the beta, which has been around for over a month, then um, probably wouldn't have seen this. I think that's uh, all been addressed in that version. I don't know that you'll produce that many. Maybe Grant is in his 930 kilometer track. Um, most people would do a lot less than that. But this feature was actually put into RTB specifically for one games company. Uh, wanted to use it for their game and produce uh, separate objects so that instead of rendering the full uh, terrain all at once they could actually have a system where they uh, used different LODs for their terrain so up close they could render the high definition version and further away they could have a simplified version. Again uh, Grant says it's greatly inefficient the way it's um, grouping these objects up. Um, previous video I talked about the old way. Um, RTB did it in these grids so I think there was an example of a few trees sitting in here grouped with those. You could kind of argue that that's slightly inefficient. It still worked really well in, in game. It says he remodeled much of the default content uh, and it came in at one tenth the poly count. So taking a look at some of the default objects, um, you might replace all these stairs with one uh, large square, but you're going to lose the, the detail in the shape there, and as shadows fall on it, it won't have the same effect. Um, toilet blocks, got a few extra polys in it. Um, don't know about 10 times the amount of polys. These are pretty efficient, same. Uh, the vehicles are fairly efficient. There might be a few flat spaces there where you could pull a couple of polys out. Um, the, the car looks pretty good to me, but it, it does touch on a point. Um, do you want to see this car up close and, and drive by in the pits? Or will it be sitting off in the distance somewhere off, off on a hill? Um, if that's the case, you could just you know take a, a square picture of it and stick it on a uh, poly and have it sitting off in the scene if it's not that uh, that very important that very important that important um, same with these objects um, if it's up close um, then it's nice to have that detail and the shine and the shadows that this will cast if it's off in the distance um, then it's no point you could get away with just a, a very two-dimensional shape there and um, plaster um, just that that picture on for it. Um, some of these objects uh, again um, they have extra polys down the middle but remember some of these are used or can be used in the spline objects so it'll actually look better with a uh, bit of curve to it. Um, the tires that, and that form tire walls um, really I don't think there's any extra polys. Take polys out of there it's going to look a little bit too squarish um, but again, you know, RTBs, these are about as simple as you'll get, but RTBs really just the, the tool. You, If you have the modeling skills in Blender, you can bring in your own um, objects there. Uh, too complicated, too many polygons, you can clean them out. Um, I will say there is one exception, and that I agree 100% is uh, with the poles. So specifically with these poles, I thought um, I'd give a go at, at remodeling and so th this is the original poll here and this is the remodeled one and I did that for each of them you can ignore that one but I did them for each of the models and came up with my own version of them now if we were to look in wireframe mode and we go to the original model to begin with you can see there that it's got 
a lot of detail and really unnecessary like all of these polygons really not adding to the object much uh, a lot of that in there just not really required so I, I would say these are very over engineered um, for their purpose because it, it's not really too often unless you're doing a video scene where you're sitting on top of the post here and you're looking at cars drive by you don't really need these to be so smooth so I, I agree a hundred percent there they they don't need to be so good but yeah this here is using about one-fifth of the amount of polygons uh, that the other one is also in the guardrails I uh, found the guardrails certainly the the very high-res guardrails I've actually gotten rid of those out of the X pack so in a future update they'll be gone um, too many people using them on long pieces of road they were okay for small parts not so good for really long distances these poles I thought I'd do a test and um, put together all the bits and pieces that we've been talking about in this video so far and so I created a track now the question is do these high-res uh, high detail models kill the uh, engine the AC engine uh, so to test this I added the high-res version uh, to a bit of track and added more than a thousand poles sitting on a track that is 16 kilometers long if I just select all of those poles you can see them sitting all along there I also added exactly a hundred thousand trees to the track I then added 304,567 grass objects and finally added uh, several kilometers worth of guardrail um, you will notice that the guardrail does have uh, polys here where possibly it's not really necessary in, in fact if there's just straight uh, pieces of guardrail you don't need so many polys there um, but do bear in mind that, that these things curve so when you have curved guardrails um, it's good to have these extra polys in there to, to do that curving. But ultimately, you want to see how this drives in the game. So let's uh, load up this okay, track. Okay, let's um, go for a burn around the track. It's 16 kilometers long, um, 100,000 trees, uh, more than 300,000 uh, grass objects, um, more than 1,000 poles, and quite a few kilometers worth of guardrail. Didn't actually measure that. Um, the frame rates that I'm getting is uh, pretty good. And it maintains a fairly good frame rate for the, the whole entire track. You see a fairly lengthy draw distance for those poles. I think they're set to an LOD of a, a kilometer. So if they're more than a kilometer away, they'll, they'll pop in. Uh, the grass for the most part is 400 meters LED, so there's some um, parts of the track where you see that grass pop in. Notice too there on the left that the grass is sitting above. I haven't rotated that grass to be on the ground or lowered the verts. Uh, it's probably something I should add to a tool. Most of the grass was added using a new tool which is yet to be released. It's coming in the next uh, release. It uh, allows you to click and drag from one part of the track to the other and it adds whatever selected objects you've got to the landscape. Um, the poles were done the same way, I just sort of kept them right there. Obviously following the terrain there in a very wild way. Um, probably want to rethink how that's done. Um, and I've sh put shadow casting on some of the objects, only where they're going to impact the, the track. No point putting uh, shadow casting on everything especially the grass um, that would be interesting um, the idea is a test line. but these are using the the, um, the low res version of the guardrails and the high res version uh, i'm removing because it is just too many points in it um, just at the moment is the high res version of the poles which I will change to a low-res version. Uh, I do agree there are too many point 
bits and hollies in this version. They look pretty up close, but you know, uh, from any sort of distance, you don't need that kind of detail. Um, so down the end here, the grass will pop in, so it probably needs a, a couple of hundred more uh, meters on the LOD there. So that it doesn't pop in. This section of track I really like uh, the way the sun glistens off the, the road and then uh, the trees pass that um, shining light through there. And then the frame rate's still sitting up there, so uh, I think the, the biggest killer of frame rates is when you have too many objects using too many different textures. The number of points and polys most CPUs can, can deal with fairly well. Um, obviously, there's, there's a moment where you go too overboard with things. Um, but for the most part, I think it's swapping in and out those textures. It um, really slows things down. So, keyboard driving. We bother getting the wheel out for this, especially when we do lots of little testing on the track. Missing a big patch of grass there that I could have put in, but <laughs> I got to the 300,000. I thought that, that's probably enough grass. Um, I don't mind the effect from here if you're looking at it from up high, it doesn't really look that good. Uh, some games have different ways that they do grass for racing games. This sort of grass is okay because you're generally looking at it from, from this level. You're not too far from the end now. Hopefully I can keep it on the track. Hey. And a few more corners to go. Pretty high speed track. But there's really one just to test out how RTB goes for, for performing so many um, objects and how it spaces them out in the track. And, uh, thanks again for watching.